Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. To him be praise and thanks and honor and glory now and forevermore, my fellow redeemed. The word of God for our devotion this evening is taken from the Apostle St. John's last writing, his New Testament book of Revelation. We read there from chapter 5. John says, Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. This is the word of our Lord Christ. There is something about lambs that is appealing to little children. Maybe they've never seen a real live lamb or stroked its soft fleece. Yet many of them still have that stuffed toy lamb that they cuddle up to every night when they go to bed. They carry it around with them during the day. It goes with them everywhere they go and it's pretty worn out from all the use that it gets. Maybe a tail is missing or ear is worn off. Perhaps after a while it's gotten so dirty that it never does look clean again, no matter how many times you throw it in the washer and dryer. It's just one of the most favorite stuffed animals that there is. A lamb is also attractive to us, who are God's little ones. And as the children of God, we know why. It is because of the wonderful love of our God that caused him to send his son to be the Lamb of God for us. And the Lamb is special to us and appealing to us too because of what Jesus, the Lamb of God, has done for us because he loves us so much. In the book of Revelation, John calls Jesus the Lamb some 20 different times. In our verses here in chapter 5 of Revelation, this, John describes Jesus as the lamb looking as if it had been slain. And for John, that was a picture that was filled with meaning. First of all, it took him back some 70 years in his life. 70 years ago when he was standing there with another teacher by the name of John the Baptist, and one day as he stood there with John and some of John's other followers, Jesus walked by. And it was on that day that John pointed to Jesus and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The picture of Jesus as the Lamb also reminded John of the lamb that was sacrificed in the Old Testament for the Passover celebration. He knew all about the Passover, that it happened centuries earlier when the angel of the Lord had gone throughout the country of Egypt. And as you already heard in the scripture reading, the angel of the Lord had put to death the firstborn of man and animal in every home. But when he saw the blood of the lamb smeared on the doorposts of those houses of the Israelites, the angel of the Lord would pass over and spare the firstborn there because the lamb had been sacrificed in its place. 
John also knew about the blood of all the Passover lambs, thousands and thousands of them that had been sacrificed over the years in the many Passover celebrations since that first one in Egypt. The blood of all those lambs pointed to the blood of the real Lamb of God, sent from God by God himself from heaven. In his blood, the blood of the Lamb of God would be so precious that it would cancel out all sin. And those who were covered with the blood of the Lamb would be passed over when God's judgment came on the final day. In our verses, we also hear John describing the lamb looking as if it had been slain, but now it was standing in the center of the throne. You know, you would expect that if a lamb was slain, that it would be laying lifeless in the dust of the ground. But this lamb is not lifeless, he's very much alive. He is in the middle of God's throne in heaven. He is sharing with the Father all of God's majesty and power and glory. So, so what's John telling us with this lamb? You know, some of our churches have the picture of a lamb on an altar cloth. We happen to have one here. You've been looking at it for the last six weeks. And maybe you haven't really even paid that much attention to it. But it's this picture of a lamb who obviously has been slain. He has bled out. And yet in many of those pictures, unlike this one, instead of holding a staff, the lamb is holding a banner. A banner of victory. And that's what John saw in heaven. He saw Jesus as that lamb of God who was standing in a victory. He was not just the lamb who had been slain, but the lamb who himself had slain our enemy. He was not just the, the lamb whose blood stained the wood of the cross on Calvary, but whose blood satisfied the penalty for our sin. He was not just the lamb who went silently to the slaughter, but he was the one who stepped out of the grave in victory over sin and death, that's why he is holding that banner of victory. He is the lamb who by his death won the greatest victory of all over our great enemies of sin and death in the grave. And that's why each of us wants to recognize Jesus not just as the lamb who was slain. We want to personally recognize Jesus as the lamb who was slain for me. We want to personally believe in Jesus as the Lamb and say that He is my Lamb, who is my Savior. You know, somebody once said to say Jesus died, that's history. To say that Jesus died to pay for sins, that's theology. But to say Christ died for me, that's salvation. The season of Lent, which is now quickly coming to an end, is one of those times for you and me to pause from our normal hurrying here, there, and everywhere in life and to do some serious soul searching. It's during this season of Lent that we have wanted to ask ourselves, what does the lamb slain for sinners mean to me? And we get the answer to that question, especially as we look at the blessed meal that our Lord now places this evening before us here in Holy Communion. Here in Holy Communion, Jesus the lamb, your lamb, is standing here and he is prepared to serve you. Here together with the bread and the wine, he gives you his very body that he gave into death and the very blood that he poured out for your sins on the cross of Calvary. 
by giving us his body and blood. He wants to assure you and me of the truth that he was slain for us. As you receive this sacrament tonight and every time you receive it, your Lord Jesus comes up to you. He puts his hand on your shoulder. He looks straight into your eyes and he reassures each of you individually that he was slain for you. When you receive those elements tonight or any time you receive Holy Communion, your Lord Jesus looks you in the eye individually and personally and he says to you, here is my body given for you. Here's my blood poured out for you. Your sins are forgiven, all of them. Even the ones that you slip back into every day. Even those sins of the past that keep coming back to haunt you and plague you and bother you and weigh you with guilt. Your Lord Jesus says to you, you are forgiven. Go home now in peace. In this way, then, he reassures you of his forgiveness and strengthens your trust in him as a lamb. What a wonderful proof of his love that he has given for you. Because he is the lamb who was slain for us and washes us clean of our sins in his blood, we can now look forward to that day when you and I are going to have to stand before the judgment seat of God we are going to stand before him clean and holy because our robes have been washed white in the blood of the Lamb. In wonderful love for us, God has made us his little ones through faith in his Lamb so we can look forward to singing his eternal praises to the Lamb and to the Father together with so many others who trust in Jesus as we do. John describes those praises here in our readings in terms of golden bowls. And they are bowls that are full of incense. But you'll notice that John encourages that you and I not wait until we get to heaven before we offer those bowls of praise up to the Lamb. We're to do it now. John says, you, the Lamb, have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. We, we are not just to sit here enjoying this love and forgiveness that we have in the Lamb. God wants us to be busy serving Jesus right now. We are to be kings and priests who don't just sit here and say, oh, that we were there. Jesus wants us to roll up our sleeves right now and serve him while we're still here on earth. We are to use our daily lives to spread the gospel message of the Lamb so that others learn of him and put their trust in him. Now that's pretty easy to do here in church when you're sitting here together with a bunch of people who hold the same faith as you who agree with you about the same things about Jesus, who with their lips will sing the same praises that you sing and sing them just as joyfully as you do. It's a whole other matter when you get outside the church where you live real life. God wants you to praise your Lord and praise the Lamb in those places where you work, where your fellow employees scoff at the way you behave and sneer at the way you talk. God wants you to praise the Lamb in the high school hallways, in the college classrooms where there are people without any tact or without any politeness are scratching away at the varnish of your faith and what you believe. God wants us to praise the Lamb when you lay in the hospital bed where reality never takes a nap. God wants you to praise the Lamb in our families where God's love and the love of the Lamb needs to be shown to our family members by the things that we say and the things that we do. 
God wants us to praise the Lamb right here in our own church where there's so much ministry to be done. All of that belongs in your golden bowl of praise. And sure, some would call it work and some would call it sacrifice, but for you and me who value what the Lamb has done for us, we see it simply as a joyful response of thanks and love to our Lord. What makes Jesus, the Lamb of God, so attractive to us? Well, as God's little lambs, we know. He is the Lamb who was slain for us, that we could live at peace with him. May we never take our Lamb and just put him on top of the dresser of life and leave him there. But may we always cuddle him close to our hearts and keep him in our lives. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all our human understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.